It is believed by many that approximately 445,000 years ago, ancient astronauts from another planet in the cosmos landed on Earth looking for gold. Fourteen tablets of Lord Enki also provide an overview of the emergence of life. It is also mentioned in the tablets of Lord Enki how civilization came into existence on Earth. Chapter 1.1 the first tablet of Lord Enki talks about a terrible atomic war on Earth between the Anunnaki. A deadly radioactive cloud wiped out both gods and humans. Interestingly, this was considered the worst disaster since the Great Flood. Chapter 1.2 In the second chapter, the tablet mentions Anunnaki's home planet, Nibiru. They believed they originated from what our scientists call, primordial soup. They described their planet's thick atmosphere, vegetation, and cycles around the sun, with hot and cold periods. Conflicts arose, leading to the use of atomic bombs that devastated their planet. Eventually, peace was established, and a one-world government was formed. Chapter 1.3 This tablet explains the hierarchy of kingship on Nibiru and mentions the king's marriages, including his union with his brother's daughter. Chapter 1.4 According to the tablet, Anunnaki's home planet faced troubles with its atmosphere. They found a solution by using finely powdered gold in the upper atmosphere for repair. This decision came after a fight among them leading to the killing of a king, similar to the story of Cain and Abel. Chapter 1.5 of the tablet talks about the Anunnaki Council's decision regarding a person who killed the king, who happened to be his distant relative. They decided to make him the new king and didn't give any punishment for his actions. Chapter 1.6 In this tablet, the king attempts to heal the planet's atmosphere by detonating atomic bombs inside volcanoes. Unfortunately, it proves ineffective, and the Anunnaki are not pleased. The next person in line for the throne challenges the king and defeats him in a wrestling match. Fleeing from the Anunnaki, the king escapes to Earth aboard a spacecraft, resembling a story akin to the casting down of Satan. The Second Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 2.1 This tablet recounts how the defeated king escapes from Nibiru and plans to journey to a snow-covered Earth. He boards a spaceship equipped with atomic bombs, intending to clear a path through the asteroid belt, which had previously blocked the Anunnaki's access to Earth. Chapter 2.2 the tablet describes the arrival of the defeated king on Earth. Chapter 2.3 In this tablet, the defeated king's initial days on Earth are narrated. He discovers breathable air, various fruits, and fish. Moreover, he finds traces of the gold that Nibiru needs to repair its atmosphere. In an attempt to communicate with the new king of Nibiru, he proposes a deal. The Third Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 3.1 this tablet recounts the defeated king's attempts to regain his status by offering the new king knowledge of the gold on Earth as a bribe. Chapter 3.2 The negotiations come to an end as a team is sent to Earth to assess the presence of a substantial amount of gold. If confirmed, the defeated king will have another chance to win the throne. Chapter 3.3 The Anunnaki travel to Earth, making a brief stop on Mars for water as their spacecraft operates on water. Upon arrival on Earth, they touch down. Chapter 3.4 the tablet describes the first six days of the advanced Anunnaki team on Earth, observing an abundance of food, water, fish, and animals. Chapter 3.5 The Anunnaki team leader declares the seventh day a rest day while processing metals from the waters. The concepts of day, month, and year are named. Chapter 3.6 The tablet narrates the search for gold, which is found but not in significant quantities. The remaining atomic bombs on the defeated king's spacecraft are removed and hidden in a cave to prevent his access. An Anunnaki team member leaves Earth to transport the first basketfuls of gold to Nibiru. The Fourth Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 4.1 The tablet begins with the arrival of a spaceship carrying the first basket of gold. It was learned that larger gold deposits were underground on Earth. A high-ranking Anunnaki was assigned to oversee Earth operations and arrived on the planet from Nibiru. Chapter 4.2 The Anunnaki visits Earth to inspect the supposed underground gold deposits. A plan is made to decide which of his sons will return to Nibiru and which one will remain in charge of Earth operations, due to their rivalry for the throne. Chapter 4.3 The new king's sons draw lots to determine their roles, and the defeated king asks for a second wrestling match for the throne. The new king wins the match, but the defeated king bites off his penis in a final act of defiance. The defeated king is exiled to Mars, where it was expected he would die. Chapter 4.4 The new king returns to Nibiru and plans the gold harvest on Earth including establishing relay stations on Mars and possibly the Moon. Earth is referred to as Eden. Chapter 4.5 Specific equipment, spaceships, and rockets are built on Nibiru for use on Earth. The Anunnaki faces challenges with Earth's shorter cycles and atmosphere. A group of Anunnaki, including healers, leaves Nibiru for Earth. They first stop on Mars to check on the exiled defeated king and establish a relay station before proceeding to Earth. 
The Fifth Tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 5.1. Mor and Nunaki arrive on Earth, and the son in charge of gold harvesting meets his sister, a healer. They discuss their family on Nibiru and their desire for their son to come to Earth. The number of Anunnaki on Mars and Earth increases. Chapter 5.2. The tablet mentions the continuing immoral actions of some Anunnaki, including forbidden relationships between siblings. The king's daughter and son have a son together. The king's son in charge of gold mining is cursed by his half-sister after mistreating her. He experiences health problems but finds relief by avoiding her. Chapter 5.3. Rivalries and conflicts arise between the king's two sons, leading to war. The gold is transported to Nibiru to heal the atmosphere. There are now five Anunnaki cities on Earth, and the Ajiji workers start to complain about their workload. Chapter 5.4 The commander of Mars desires to be king and steals the Tablets of Destinies from Eden, leading to his defeat and death. The Anunnaki leaders develop a plan to refine gold on Earth and take only refined gold to Nibiru to accommodate the Ajiji for their rest and return journey. Chapter 5.5 the king's son in charge of mining becomes fascinated with life and animals on Earth. Anunnaki workers rebel in the mines. The king's sons and others devise a plan to return the rebelling Anunnaki to Nibiru and create a primitive worker, the Lulu, to ease their workload. The Sixth Tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 6.1. The tablet describes the debates and discussions about creating a primitive worker. One of the king's sons believes that the father of all beginning has the power of creation. The other son argues that such beings already exist and should be helpers, not slaves. Despite disagreements, the king decrees the creation of the primitive worker, which some believe involved the creation of mythical creatures. Chapter 6.2 The Anunnaki experiments with DNA, trying to combine their DNA with that of Earth's two-legged creatures, hominoids, to create a viable primitive worker. Many attempts fail, resulting in creatures with deformities. Chapter 6.3 the Anunnaki decides to impregnate one of their females with the combined DNA to create a primitive worker. A child named Adam is born. Seven Anunnaki female healers from Nibiru volunteer to be impregnated and give birth to seven male children. Chapter 6.4 Due to the scarcity of Anunnaki females, the decision is made to create female children and allow them to procreate. The king's son in charge of mining also engages in genetic experiments, leading to more children. Chapter 6.5 Adam and Eve are moved to Eden the main Anunnaki city, along with the other created beings. They are left to roam Eden, but conflicts arise between the Anunnaki leaders about their creations. The Seventh Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 7.1 Adam and Eve have many children, and the Anunnaki have now been on Earth for three generations. Earth experiences natural upheavals and environmental changes. Chapter 7.2 The Anunnaki consider abandoning the relay station on Mars after 80 shars, equivalent to 288,000 Earth years. Chapter 7.3. A new spaceship port is planned on Earth for direct transport of gold to Nibiru. The king visits Earth to inspect the new spaceport. Chapter 7.4. Conflicts arise again between the king's sons and their offspring. The primitive workers, Adam and Eve's descendants, are brought into the city and given tasks. Chapter 7.5. The king's son who created Adam and Eve continues to experiment, leading to more offspring. He secretly impregnates several young Eves, resulting in births. He presents them as a new, more intelligent generation and passes them off as foundlings. The new generation is given tasks involving agriculture and herding. Once they procreate, the king on Nibiru requests the male earthlings to visit Nibiru. These translations and transcriptions are based on the works of author and researcher Zakaria Sitchin. We will explore the next seven tablets in our next video. Stay tuned like, comment, and share.